There are two sources of inspiration for Joy Boy that Oda could have derived from. I mean, I, I can't know that, but that's what I found at least. First, I think this is the most known of the two, is uh, Joy Boy from West Indian folklore. And second, we have the king Joyo Boyo from Indonesia and uh, specifically Java. Okay, let's begin. There is a picture from a book called The Encyclopedia of Things That Never Were, Creatures, Places and People. A book published in 1987. So I'm gonna read from there. Let's check it out. Joy Boy is the, the West Indian character who personifies the human need to dance and sing. Like Luffy, who always want to party and insisted from the beginning on having a musician in the crew. Also, Oda himself likes to party and he said that he doesn't like to kill characters because that would ruin the mood for the party at the end of the arc. Let's not forget the ultimate song for pirates and parties, which is the same word written differently. With a different letter order, that's not a coincidence, is it? Is being sake, which is filled with clues about the One Piece, like the name of the final island, Laugh Tale, before it was revealed in the actual manga. It was written in the final verse of the song. Moreover, many people, such as uh, Arthur from Library of O'Hara, who made a great theory about this, believe that Luffy's true dream is to have a party with the entire world in the end of the series. So it definitely plays a very important role in the story. It says that he, that he traveled to the Caribbean, Caribbean with a shipment of slaves from West Africa. We also know that Sun God Nika, who is presumably the same person as Joy Boy, was a figure that slaves would pray to and they believed that one day he would free them. And of course, uh, in the story we have a lot of um, instances of slavery, like uh, with the Tontata or the Boa sisters, but of course the most known one is with the Fishmen, who have a deep connection with the ancient kingdom and Joy Boy. In fact, in the Fishman Island arc, we had the first mention of Joy Boy in the Poneglyph, that Robin read, which was uh, an apology of Joy Boy himself to the Poseidon, an ancient weapon. And we still have slavery in the world of One Piece, in the form of uh, the celestial dragons, who always have slaves, who would be waiting for someone to free them. And of course that someone would be probably Luffy in the end after the war with the world government the end of the story. Joy Boy smiles perpetually at all problems of mankind. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone knows of the importance of smiles in One Piece. Like the concept of smile and laugh in difficult situations, as Jaguar D. Sol told Robin in her uh, past. And even upon death, we see the people with uh, D. Smile and also Odin. We don't know, I guess. If if there's a connection there, but uh, like Roger, Ace and others. And Luffy himself smiled when he was about to be executed by Baggy. And there's a theory that the letter D represents a smile, a sideways, you know. And in this arc, Kaido said to Luffy, the more precarious the situation, the bigger your smile, in the official translation. Furthermore, 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 Sandman, who is a trustworthy translator according to other YouTubers at least, <laughs> said this about the original Japanese. Kaido is implying that if Luffy laughs more, something will happen. For example, the more you laugh, the stronger Will of D will get, and that Oda is deliberately hiding what Kaido said here. This whole arc revolves around smiles, as in the uh, artificial devil fruit and their side effects, which is the non-stop laughter. There has to be a reason that this was chosen by Oda, especially since he uh, reveals Joy Boy in the same arc. Okay, let's continue. It says here that um, <laughs> Joy Boy cures 
human troubles by tapping on his drum. This became much more significant after the latest chapter in which Zunisa says that she can hear the drums of liberation right before announcing the return of Joy Boy. Also, it has been pointed out by Sandman again that the same sound effect was used in chapter 253 in the famous campfire party uh, scene in Skypea where we have the so-called uh, Nika pose from uh, Luffy dancing. And finally, it says that whoever listens to Joy Boy's music is compelled to dance until they have shaken the black cloak of despair. In Luffy's case, he brings joy to the people around him and like the Skypea scene, when they party they do dance and sing and stuff. Uh, but this could also be metaphorical, in the sense that he unburdens people, as we see multiple times with the straw hats and other uh, oppressed people along the way. And uh, he has, as Mihawk said, the power to make allies of everyone he meets, even former enemies like uh, Buggy, Mr. Do, you know, and uh, maybe change them for the better. That's it for the first one. So next we have King Joyo Boyo. Who was Joyo Boyo or Jaya Baye Batkama? By the way, before uh, we continue, when I was uh, researching the, for the King Joyo Boyo on the Wikipedia page for like some hours, he had the name Nika written along with his other uh, pseudonyms. So it had to be the work of a One Piece fan. I was like, what the fuck? There's no way he's called both Joyo Boyo and Nika. That's him then, right? And then, uh, like a day later or less, it was removed. But anyway, he was a Javanese king that ruled from 1135 to 1179. By the way, Java could have uh, been the inspiration for Jaya. And we know for sure that Jaya had ties with the ancient kingdom. They fought alongside them against the 20 kingdoms. Also in Jaya, we found a poneglyph inside a golden bell and the same writing as the poneglyphs was written in a building. Speaking of poneglyphs, let's have a look at this. Looks cool, right? This is the Singapore stone, which is a fragment of a large sandstone slab which originally stood at the mouth of the Singapore River. The large slab which is believed to date back uh, to at least the 13th century and possibly as early as the 10th or 11th century bore an undeciphered inscription. Sounds familiar, right? Recent theories suggest that the inscription is either in Old Javanese or we don't care about the others, right? Okay, back to Joyo Boyo. When Joyo Boyo ruled as the king, it is said that Java prospered and that he was uh, a just king. He was also considered to be the Ratu Adil. The Ratu Adil is a term that means just queen or king and is a messianic figure found in Indonesian folklore, more precisely in Javanese tradition. It is believed that he or she will establish universal peace and justice. And what did Oda say that he thinks about the most? World peace. And it is believed that the Ratu Adil, the just king, will be reborn in the dark age of suffering to restore the justice, order and harmony, to bring the era of prosperity. Because, you see, the ancient Javanese believed in cyclical history with uh, alternating eras, eras, whatever, the suffering era and the prosperity era. We know that the ancient kingdom before the void century was prosperous, powerful and advanced in technology. And after the war where the world government was formed and has ruled ever since till now, I think we could say that uh, that's the era of suffering in the One Piece world. Joyo Boyo was also known for his prophecies and it is believed that he correctly predicted that Java would be invaded by white men and 400 years later the Portuguese first and then the Dutch invaded and colonized them. Um, we could make the parallel with Jaya because 
400 years after the void century, Jagger was blasted to the sky because of the knock up stream, and when they landed to Skypea, they were attacked by the Skypeans, went to war and uh, lost the upper yard, and they continued I mean, to fight and stuff. Jojo Boyo also predicted that yellow people, his words, would end the white man's control, and the Japanese did invade the Dutch and won, but uh, they occupied Java after, for some time. And this event happened roughly 800 years after the prophecy. 800 years is, uh, as most of you will know, an important number in the One Piece world, because 800 years after the Void Century is also the current timeline in One Piece. So Boyo also made predictions about the next Ratua deal, the Just King, as we said before. He predicted some things that would signal his arrival. I did some research and this is what I found. Carts slash uh, iron wagons will drive without horses, meaning um, automated vehicles such as cars. But I think in the One Piece world this would be the sea train, a recent invention. Next, he said that ships would fly through the sky, meaning airplanes. Um, in our case, the Thousand Sun is literally a ship that can fly through the sky for some seconds at least. Or maybe this could mean NL ship, the Maxim, that went to the fucking moon. He also said that an iron necklace would surround the country. I've read that this is referring to the railroad that was built. This is probably a stretch, but maybe this can tie to Tequila Wolf, which we know pretty much nothing about, besides that it is a bridge and is being constructed for 700 years for some reason, some unknown reason. He said that rivers would lose their current. This supposedly is predicting global warming. And in one piece, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> the calm belt? Probably not. The only current that comes to mind is the Tarai current, which connects any slow bimple down and the old Marineford, which is uh, three of the most important places in the world. But I'm not sure how that would tie into a theory. And the last and the least, he also said that Ratu Adil would be a descendant of the royal family of uh, their kingdom, you know, the, their ancient kingdom, if you will. He also said that his name must contain at least one syllable of the Javanese Noto Negoro, which, uh, fun fact, I don't know, I mean, if it's fun, but a lot of politicians uh, used this to gain power after uh, those prophecies in the uh, Javanese history. In the One Piece story, um, probably this is would be the letter D. We don't really know what what is the D, but it is theorized that the D clan is from the ancient kingdom at the very least, and could have been the royal family's, uh, you know, name. <laughs> and finally, he will come to rescue and reunite Indonesia after an acute crisis, ushering in the dawn of a new golden age. So yeah, this is it. It could be both one or none of them, probably, but I thought it was interesting enough for a video, considering the current events in the manga. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, peace out.